Hey everyone, this is the video for um, section 1.3 for Honors Algebra 2. Um, you should be using your student journal. Um, you shouldn't really need additional pages of work, but if you want to grab some extra paper, you can. And you probably will need, absolutely will need a graphing calculator. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, I'm on page 15 of your student journal. All right, so in this unit, in this section, I should say, what we're going to be talking about is um, fitting data um, on scatter plots, like fitting data with an, a, a model, or in other words, um, kind of representing a linear relationship given a nonlinear uh, data set. So for example, I'm just going to make up some points here. I'm not even going to put numbers on my grid. Um, if I have a scatter plot, so a scatter plot is basically just a relationship between two variables, and a lot of times we name those, like we, we call them cost or time or whatever. Um, so anyway, each of these points represents a piece of data. Um, there are three kind of key words in this uh, little section. And the first one just means line of fit. A line of fit basically means that if we have this data or this relationship, a line of fit is a line that we use to kind of approximate a linear relationship for the data. So like, for example, if I asked you to draw a line that best matches the data, you might draw one, you know, kind of right through here. You might say, okay, that's my line of fit. Um, whereas somebody else might draw it a little bit. Maybe you drew yours a little above or maybe a little below. The difference between line of fit and line of best fit, line of best fit is actually calculated. And we're going to do this on our calculators here in a little bit. Um, but what it does is it's the average. So in other words, we use all the data points and we then figure out the distance, the average distance where I could put this line where each point is like the same distance away from the line. And so obviously that's a lot more challenging to do if you're doing it by hand, um, which is why it's nice to have the aid of a graphing calculator to kind of calculate that for you. So the line of fit is really kind of any you know, linear equation you can kind of, or linear graph that you can put into your data to kind of represent the data in a graphical manner. The line of best fit is actually a calculated, um, you know, average of all the points, kind of where would that exact line be. There's also something called a correlation coefficient, and it's always denoted with an, a value of R. And this value is between, this equal sign, is between 1 and negative 1. So it's, um, you know, less than 1, greater than negative 1. So, for example, if I have a, an, a correlation coefficient, and a lot of times there is a way to figure it out by hand, but we're going to use our graphing calculators, and I'll show you um, that in a second. But let's say I had a, gra um, a correlation coefficient of 0.99. What this correlation coefficient, this number, tells me is two things. Number one, it tells me that data represents a positive linear relationship. And so if this were a negative, then I would know that my data represents a negative linear relationship. So imagine if I had, um, you know, another scatter plot here. And let's say my data was kind of more in a, um, let's say it's closer together, but in a negative kind of direction then my correlation coefficient would be a negative number. So your R value is something between one and negative one, and the closer it is to one, tells you how close or how, how close the line that you're drawing in here is to your data. For example, the closer it is to one means that all of these points will be really, really close to your, um, to your line of best fit. So 0.99 is almost perfect, which means that if I were to actually draw this, my, my graph would look probably something like this, where the points would be really close to that line of best fit, um, not much leeway, uh, you know, the, there's not a whole lot, it's a very strong linear relationship. If I had a number like um, R equals, say, 0.5, where in the middle, right? So it's not positive, it's not negative. What that generally means is that I have a graph that you really can't tell, because obviously 0.5 is between 1 and negative 1, um, or actually, zero. I'm sorry, 0 is between 1 and negative 1, but say, let's say 0.5, it's a positive relationship, but not a really strong one, which means that you could probably draw a linear graph, right, to represent, let's say I had this data, but if I drew in a linear graph, a line, um, you know, my points are not real close to the line. 
The closer this number is to one or the closer that number is to negative one tells you how close your data points are to your line. Um, all right, some other things that you probably need to remind yourself of for this little section is just some linear equation formulas. So this is your slope intercept form, y equals mx plus b. Um, your slope formula, that is not on here, but I'm going to write it on here. So your slope formula is um, m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So that's that change in y over change in x. And then another one you might need is the point slope formula. A lot of times we use this. You probably use this in middle school, perhaps, or in your algebra one classes. Um, but basically, if you're given a point and you're given a slope, you can use that formula. Um, anyways, we're going to be using all these formulas to kind of help if we were calculating this stuff by hand. Um, I just wanted to go over one example of what we can do. Um, I'm not going to really go over a lot of uh, how to find the equation of a line. That's a lot of what we're doing in this section. You should already really know how to do that. I'm going to go through one example. If you feel like you need additional examples or some additional help on that, I encourage you to kind of look through the book, look through some of the examples in this, in this section, um, and obviously ask questions. I just want to look at one problem in particular down here. We're just going to look at number one. It just says, um, use the graph to write an equation of the line and interpret the slope. So what we're asking for here is um, I'm asking you to find the equation of a, of a line. Um, and so if you remember back in your Algebra 1 days, um, in order to write the equation of a linear equation, you need a slope and you need a y-intercept. So on my graph, I can already tell my y-intercept is at 50. And so the only thing I'm missing here is my slope. And so uh, probably the easiest way to do this is since I'm already given two points, you could do like rise over run just by looking at your graph and kind of calculating it that way. Um, or you can just use the formula like I was just showing you before, um, where you do y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And it would look something like this. I would do, uh, I'll call the 10, one that point as my x1, or I'm sorry, my x2 and y2. So I'm going to go 51 minus 50 over 10 minus 0, and I get 1 over 10. So then my equation, so my linear equation that I'm asked to find is 1 tenth x plus 50. So this is the equation that represents this data here, okay? Um, one of the questions I know I'm going to have you do this on some of the practice is asking you to interpret the, the slope or interpret the y-intercept or sometimes even both. So what I want you to understand is what I'm asking you to do here is to look at the variables. So on your x-axis, we're talking about number of text messages sent. On your y-axis, we're asking or talking about cost. So first, I want you to realize that this 50, this y-intercept of 50 means that send no text messages. Remember, a y-intercept is the point 0 and then the y, right? So that means when x is 0, y is 50. So in terms of the context of this problem, that means when I send 0 text messages, because that's what x represents, I'm gonna, it's going to cost me $50. So imagine that's going to be your fee for, like, you know, your service on your cell phone, for example. You have to pay regardless of how many text messages you send a month. Then the slope is what tells us kind of like uh, the rate at which it's increasing. So we know that the cost is increasing as the number of text messages we send. To be more specific, you would say since the rise over the run, right? So this is your y values over your x values. The 1 is actually going to refer to cost because that's your y's. And the 10 is actually going to refer to the number of text messages. So to kind of say this in words, you would say... For every dollar increase, um, I'm, you, I'm, I'm having 10 more text messages are sent. So for every, for every dollar increase in my bill, I have 10 additional text messages. So that's a, one way of how we interpret the slope of this equation and also the y-intercept. All right. And I'm going to have you look at a couple things. So on this one, I'm going to turn on my light here. Um, on this one, um, we are asked to uh, we are asked to grab our graphing calculators, and we're going to I'm going to show you how to calculate the line of best fit um, from using your calculator, which hopefully will work out here. Okay, 
Um, all right, so I'm just gonna go through one example. I'm gonna go ahead and use number five. So in order for us to do this, um, I need to be able to put all this data into my calculator. So I need to know all these points. So it's helpful sometimes to go ahead and label these points ahead of time. Um, so what I'm looking at here is this point right here. It's going to be the point one, five. So it's just to help me. I'm just going to label them on my grid here real quick. This is the point two, two. This is the point three, one. This is the point five, two. And then this is the point five, five. All right, so we have five points that we're gonna enter into our calculators. So I want you to grab your calculators and I want you to hit the stat button. So the stat button's right here. It's located kind of next to your arrow keys here on the right side of your calculator. Um, all right, so when you hit stat, what you will see is this screen here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna hit edit. So your cursor should already be on edit. So just hit enter. Now. My my screen is blank because I cleared it out of here, but if you had anything stored in any of these lists, um, to clear it, all you would need to do is put your cursor at the top of a list and then hit clear and enter, and it would clear the whole list. So anytime you need to clear anything out of there, that's an easy way of doing it. What I'm going to do now is I want to enter my X values into list 1 for all of my points and my Y values into list 2. So I'm just going to take each individual point and I'm going to enter them into my calculator. So list one is going to be my X value. So I'm just going to hit one enter and I'm going to arrow over to list two, enter in the five that matches that point. So the first point I had in my calculator is the point one five. All right, so I'm going to go back over here. I'm going to enter in the point two, two. And then I'm going to enter in the point three, one. And then I'm going to enter in the point five, two and five, five. All right, so we've stored our data. We can actually, you know, go out of this screen. It doesn't really matter, but we, we stored our data. So I just hit second mode or second quit. Um, in order to get a scatter plot for our calculators to, to kind of generate a scatter plot, we need to hit second Y equals. So the Y equals button's up here. You can see where it says stat plot. Um, again, your calculator should have all your plots off at this point, which is fine. Mine are all off. I'm just gonna hit enter. And what it does, it brings me up um, this screen. I'm just going to hit enter on, on the on button. So my cursor's on on. I'm going to hit enter just so that it can tell me to turn that screen on. Um, under type, you want to pick scatter plot. So that's that first one. Remember, I put all my X values of my points in list one and my Y values in list two. So that should already be marked. Um, you can use a box to represent your data points, a plus sign, a dot, doesn't really matter. Of course, a color. Um, all right, so once we have that kind of set, your data, I've told my calculator that I want my to use the data that's in list ones and list two, and we're gonna make a scatter plot. So I'm just gonna hit the graph button, and the graph button's over here on the right side. So what you'll notice, you'll see some dots over here, and, then, and that's a fine looking graph. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change my window so that I only see the first quadrant, because remember, all of these points were all in the first quadrant. So just this is just more just for practice, but I'm gonna hit the window button, and where it says X min and X max, in order to get the first quadrant, I want my X min to be zero, my X max to be 10. When it says X scale, that just means what you're counting by. For the Y min and Y max, same thing. I want my Y minimum to be zero, my Y max to be 10. So that way it gives me just that first quadrant. All right, so um, if you had to take a guess as to what the correlation coefficient would be, um, would you guess that it's positive? Would you guess that it's negative? Would you guess that it's close to negative one, like it is a strong negative relationship? Or would you guess that it's close to positive one, like a strong positive relationship? Looking at this, first of all, we only have five points, so it's not a, a lot of data to go on. Um, it doesn't really look like there's a, a lot of correlation going on here. So I'm going to make a prediction that whatever the correlation be, I could probably argue that this could be positive or negative. Um, but it's probably not going to be a strong one either way. So my guess, just out of the, uh, just from without ever doing this, my guess is that my R value is going to be close to zero. Because remember, zero is kind of in that halfway, right? It's like it, it, you can't really tell what it is, positive or negative, if it's a strong correlation, that. So I'm going to guess that my correlation coefficient that my calculator is going to calculate for me is going to be close to zero. 
So how we do this is if we hit, um, we're going to go back to stat. So I'm just going to hit the stat button here. I'm going to arrow over to where it says Kelk. Um, that's arrowed over one spot. And then you have all these options here. Um, I'm going to hit linear regression, which is number four. And I'm going to hit enter. And it opens up this screen. List one, list two, frequency. And there's really nothing you need to do on this screen. It's just basically making sure that everything is in the right spot. So again, X's were in list one, our Y's are in list two, so we're good there. Um, and then I hit enter and I get to this screen. All right, so what this tells me, this generated, the calc using those five data points, this generated the line of best fit. In other words, it calculated um, the average distance um, where you would have to place that line so that it was the best possible line. So notice that they gave you the format, Y equals AX plus B. So what they're basically saying is they're, you know, it's a linear equation because we picked linear regression. They're telling you your A value is negative 0.078125. So I'm going to abbreviate that to negative 0.08x. And then the B value, which is your y-intercept, would be 3.25. So this is going to be my equation for my line of best fit. So that's what, how I generate this line of best fit. So this is my slope, this is my y-intercept, and it was just generated from the calculator. The other important piece of information here is your correlation coefficient, and that is your R value. So remember what I said about that R value. Um, I, I wasn't expecting it to be very um, big, or I was expecting it to be kind of close to zero. So my correlation coefficient is point. 0, 07 if I round to the two decimal places. So as you can tell, they have it as a negative. So again, based on the, the data points that the calculator kind of averaged, they picked it as a negative correlation and then and it's 0 0.07. So what that tells you, it's far away from negative one. So that's going to tell us that our um, we don't have a very strong correlation, that the points are kind of scattered. It's really kind of hard to tell if it's negative or positive. They're definitely not close together. You should be able to make predictions based off of like graphs. So like, for example, if you looked at this graph, you should be able to tell me something about the correlation coefficient. It shouldn't be surprising if you pick a correlation coefficient for here, that would be negative, uh, let's say 0.98. And the reason I say that is because maybe it's not 100% perfect linear, um, like if you had a net, it, but it is definitely a linear relationship and it's decreasing, so it'd be negative. Um, this one, I would say uh, it's pretty close to being, you know, right on the money. So it's going to be a pretty, uh, a positive correlation coefficient. So I know that it's also going to be really close to uh, one because, again, the points are not far away from the line. So I would say something like, uh, if I were to make a guess on this one, I would say, you know, 0 0.9 would be a good, a good guess for that one. So again, what I want you to be able to do here is I want you, especially in your comp books, I want you to go through the of trying to figure out, like given a scatter plot, how to do the line of best fit, and then what you what does the correlation coefficient mean in the context of this problem? So what does it mean for your scatter plot? All right. Um, that is it for this video. Uh, we are gonna I'm gonna go ahead and do a next video because I know you guys have two for today. Um, feel free to practice with these other ones if you want more practice with your calculator. If you have any questions, please let me know. All right, thanks guys.